is by lots of motion for an interim order under section 98 of the CPA rules 1023 of the constitutional court petitions and reference rules rules 2 to 43 and 44 of the rules the Court of Appeal. My Lord, the application is for the following orders. One, that an interim order of temporary injunction does issue to restrain the implementation of the impugned amendment of the first respondent's constitution by barring the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth and sixth respondents by themselves or through their authorized servants or agents from conducting in any way or manner duties and obligations of the respective offices of the Secretary General, the Deputy Secretary General, the National Treasurer, and Deputy National Treasurer pending the determination of the main constitutional application filed herein. B, restraining the implementation of the resolution of the first respondent's parliamentary caucus passed at Changkwanzi urging the chairperson of the first respondent to contest a sole presidential candidate for NRM and flag bearer during the 2016 general elections by barring the first, second, third, are uh, the fourth, fifth, and sixth respondents by themselves or through their authorized servants or agents from popularizing or in any way campaigning through print, electronic media, display, or posters using any means whatsoever, pending the disposal of the main constitutional application, and last but not least, to restrain the implementation of the impugned parts of Senindo report, insofar as it relates the impugned amendment of the first respondent's constitution by the respondents themselves or through their authorized agents in any manner whatsoever pending the disposal of the main application. And the third, that the cost of the application be provided for. And my Lord, I will give the main highlights of the grounds in the interest of time. Certain aspects of the Senida report, the assumption of duty of the second to the fifth respondents, their designated offices, thereby 
infringing the Constitution, rendering the main hearing of the application nugatory, deprive the applicant the right to a hearing by the court and his other rights and freedoms ushered in under the multi-party political dispensation. My Lord, the petition raises a prima facie case with very serious issues that made constitutional interpretation. My Lord, the issues have been outlined in paragraphs 5 at 18 of the motion. And my Lord, they relate to the infringement of the Constitution, Article 71, where all parties are to observe internal democracy. They relate to the non-failure of publication of the amendment in a gazette in advance. They relate to publicizing the intended amendment among the members of the NRM and the public at large. The members, that is ring facing the candidate of the presidency. They relate to denial of the membership to elect their members as dictated by the constitution. They relate to ring fencing posts. They relate to anti deepening of democracy, intra democracy. They relate to the unconstitutional termination of the Secretary General of the party. They relate to the retrospectivity of the amendment. They relate to the non discussion of the Senine report by the relevant organs of the NRM party. They relate to the amendment being calculated to aim at only one person, Honorable Amama Mbawas. They relate to the constitutionality of the Nambore Conference. They relate to the constitutionality of the parliamentary caucus appointing the Seninde Committee. They relate to the constitutionality of the Seninde Report as it relates to the amendments which are being questioned. They are questioning the constitutionality of the Changkwanzi resolution as regards sole candidature. And lastly, they relate to the appointment of the new office bearers. My Lord, those are the issues that merit judicial interpretation by this constitutional court. My Lord, according to paragraph 9 of the motion, the applicant will suffer irreparable loss if this court does not inject the process of violation of the Constitution. No amount of damages can atone for that violation. And my Lord, para 20 is on the balance of convenience. It is in the applicant's favor. There won't be paralysis in the party. There was no vacancy. There were no vacancies. And lastly, my Lord, it is in the interest of justice that this court entertains the motion. My Lord, the motion is supported by the affidavit of the applicant. My Lord, I will again not read all the paras, I will just bullet them. And my Lord, para four is on the imminent danger of the implementation of the amendment, which will be a violation of the Constitution the name of the articles, my Lord, are mentioned, but in particular, Article 71, which emphasizes all posts to be elective, all posts to be open for competition, and parties observe intra party democracy and uh, rule of law. My Lord, the petitioner, Para 5, is aware of the facts. Para 6 is complaining about the Changkwan's resolution of sole candidature. Paragraph 7, he attaches the actual resolutions passed at Changkwanzi and palpably shows the ring fencing of the presidential candidature, 
which is unconstitutional as highlighted in the subsequent paras, my lord. My lord, para eight, the ministers were dispatched throughout the country to market this unconstitutional resolution. Para nine, parties, they displayed this whole candidature, and my lord, the, the, the posters are, are attached. The evidence of display of sole candidature, the unconstitutional uh, adverts. My Lord, 10 is on the denial of bona fide members compete for posts. Part 11 is the Changwanza resolution is an affront to democracy. Para 12, it's unconstitutional. Para 13, the amendment of Changwanza, I mean, Nambore. Appointing instead of electing is anti constitution. Article 71. The actual amendments are attached as an extra as D1 and D2. My Lord, para 20, the amendments have been forwarded for Gazette. Para 15, new post, rather, the second, third, and fourth respondents have been appointed. It's only tomorrow when they will assume office to perpetuate the unconstitutionality of the There is nothing about the evidence I don't know about tomorrow's I'm obliged, my lord, and uh, I withdraw that position. <laughs> I'm obliged, my lord, I withdraw that remark. I was a bit taken. <laughs> uh, my amendment goes against democracy. Para 17, the second the these respondents are about to embark on, the, on their duties. Para 18, list out all the irregularities at number. Para 19, the amendments are vast press on the Seninde report, which Seninde report is itself unconstitutional. Para 20, the parliamentary caucus is lower in the hierarchy of the parties. The party organs. Uh, my lord, my lord, para 21, the amendment is intended for honorable Amama Mbawas. Para 22, complains about the retrospectivity of the amendment, which was not notified. Para 23 talks about the non gazetting of the intention to publish, to amend. Para 24, this ought to have happened 30 days before. The Gazette should have come out. Para 25, my Lord, these acts, if they are not checked by this constitutional court, they are bound to breed impunity, anarchy, which no amount of damage can at all. Para 26, my Lord, once the guilt is drawn to the attention of court, this court cannot sanction or be seen to sanction and illegal. Para 27, the amendments are undermining the rule of law and democracy. Para 28, if the injunction is not granted, the, the, the rule of law will be adversely affected and render the application and petition negative. Para 29, my lord, the petition raises prima facie case, and my lord, there is a constitutional status quo to be preserved. And my lord, para 31, there are serious issues that merit constitutional interpretation. And my lord, the balance of convenience is in favor of the applicant. The NRM party will not collapse if these people and these acts are checked until this court determines issues for constitutional interpretation. There will be no paralysis, the sky will not come down. My Lord, on a balance of convenience, the applicant will instead suffer. Uh, my Lord, uh, I will highlight the general principles that govern granting of interim orders and temporary injunctions which are well known. I will just give the highlights, and my land friend, Mr. Muema, will uh, expound on them further. 
my lord, the principles have been laid down, have been laid, the courts have held that the conditions that apply to the actual application for a temporary injunction apply also for an interim order like we are seeking, my lord. The first one, my lord, must be, there must be a prima facie case, just on the face of it, on looking at the petition, it must disclose that there is an issue for constitutional interpretation. My lord, we submit that. in perpetuation or in implementation of that amendment to continue, there would be irreparable loss, which no amount of damage can atone for. My Lord, this authority is clear on this matter. Uh, my Lord, the case of our office, my Lord, paragraph 22, of honorable order of Masike's affidavit responds to that and it, and it states that paragraph 16 is false, alarmist, and speculative. My Lord, it goes on to state in paragraph 24 that the most classic is where they complain that the rights of Honorable Amam Babazi, the resolution is aimed at him as an individual, and therefore, then we must interpret. No. If you say you know that it is aimed at him, go to Article 50, through the High Court, obtain an order stopping them from making such thing aimed at an individual. This is a matter of great urgency. 
and uh, for that purpose the ruling in the matter will be delivered by 11.30 tomorrow and uh, council are advised to be ready to report to court at short notice to receive the ruling. So we stand so adjourned. <laughs>